Hello everyone, welcome back to Easy Education London and in this video we are looking at the full walkthrough for the GCSE English Language Paper 1 and Section B. So many of you have requested to have a look at the full answer and how to score a grade 9. So first things first, very important is for you to actually understand what the mark scheme is and what it states. Many students go into the exam unaware and unfamiliar with what the mark scheme is assessing. So it's crucial that you understand the assessment objective criteria. So let's have a look at it in further detail. So for your marks, you get a mark for assessment objective five, which is the following. So let's just um, go over the key definitions. So starting off with AO5 is the ability to communicate clearly effectively and imaginatively selecting and adapting tone style and register for different forms purposes and audiences and bullet point number two is to organize information and ideas using structural and grammatical features to support coherence and cohesion of text now I strongly advise and recommend for you to write this down and actually learn the definition because this is something that you will be consistently referring to for the next few weeks and even months preparing for your exams. So I would strongly recommend highlight it and what you can also do is to put this into uh, onto a flashcard and essentially memorize the definition because um, if you can learn it you'd be able to go into the exam understanding you'll be able to go into the exam and understand what you are doing and how to impress the examiners so this is super super important and it's something for you to be aware of so let's have a look at it in further detail and what do you have to include now um, you are again provided with a level okay so the examiner will be scoring your answer and giving you a level now as you can see depending on the level so if you are on level one you'll be awarded between one to four marks um, a minimum of one up to a maximum of four marks now as we go down the higher the marks the higher the level etc so i want us all to focus on level five now level five is the highest here and just to clarify this is for the um, edexcel exam board but again for the aqa exam board it is very similar it's, it overlaps if anything so there's no major differences between the exam boards now what do you have to do for level five but first of all level five to score level five you are looking to score 20 to 24 marks for assessment objective five um so what what does that include so that includes um, shapes audience response with subtlety with sophisticated and sustained use okay so sophisticated and sustained use of tone style and register very important so with your ideas the quality of your ideas need to be sophisticated and it needs to be adapted based on the picture or based on the question you're provided with and number two manipulates complex ideas utilizing a range of structural and grammatical features to support coherence and cohesion so yes most definitely you must be demonstrating a variety of structural devices so we have covered that previously in a previous video but how do you actually organize your text how do you organize your narrative your story your description and how do you make it effective and interesting for the reader? So these are some things that you need to consider. So that's for AO5. And then for AO6, let's have a look at um, what are you expected to include. So AO6, again, is essentially the quality of your SPAC, the, the technical accuracy. So what is it exactly? Candidates must use a range of vocabulary, very important, okay, a lot of students forget about this using a range of vocabulary and sentence structures for clarity purpose and effect with accurate spelling and punctuation so you've heard this many times your teachers in school um, say this please check your spag reread your paragraphs and check does it make sense um, so we are again aiming for the highest band again which is level five and the maximum mark you can achieve is 16. So you are ideally aiming for 13 to 16 marks. So what do you have to do to achieve the 
13 to 16 marks. So first of all, uh, bullet point number one, uses an extensive vocabulary stra strategically, okay? So what this means is that you're not, you're not just using vocabulary in the first sentence or first paragraph and that's it. You use it continuously. You sustain it throughout your paragraphs. And you don't overdo it because it loses its impact, but you use it um, coherently and throughout your text. Rare spelling errors do not detract from overall meaning. So your spelling errors should be very, very minimal in order for you to score level five. And bullet point number two, punctuates writing with accuracy. So that's important. So when you're using punctuation, it has to be used correctly. And precision, using a range of sentence structures accurately. And remember a range, you have to use a variety of sentence structures. So very, show variation to the examiner. So that could include a long complex sentence, a short simple sentence, a compound sentence, even your, your sentence openers your um, adverb openers, your verb openers, your simile openers, your uh, compound adjective openers. So vary your sentences. Don't just start off with the, 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 or as I, because that becomes repetitive. Um, and selectively to achieve particular effects. So what I would strongly recommend for you all to do is to copy this down and keep this on a flashcard for you to memorize. And it's something that you definitely, definitely need to do. Um, if you want to achieve the top marks. Um, so this is something that we do cover in our online tuition classes. If you are interested in joining our GCSE English language classes, um, you can contact us via email, easyeducationlondon at gmail.com or alternatively, you can book your classes directly through our website, easyeducationlondon.com. So www.easyeducationlondon.com and this is where we go through live classes online via Zoom and we teach our students how to score the top marks for their exams. We go through mock exam papers, we go over revision tips and we are able to provide all students with live feedback. Um, so if this is something you are interested in and if you want to achieve top marks, Easy Education London is your place to be. So moving on, let's have a look at the answer itself and I can explain and give you a breakdown of what you need to do and some simple tricks and tips that you can always use regardless of the exam question. So let's have a look at it in further detail. Now, as you can see, um, I've used a space um, in the in the box to plan the question. Now, I always advise students to plan because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, even though you don't get marks for your plan, it's super important for you to plan this question because it gives you a sense of direction and it gives you some guidance in terms of where you're going. Otherwise, you start writing from the top of your head and you start waffling and you start going around in circles. So it's super important. I strongly advise you all students please 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 plan if you're wondering how do i plan in simple terms you're using your five senses to plan your question five or your section b creative writing so let's have a look um, at uh, the response and see whether this is worthy of a grade nine um, and remember the marks scheme we have gone over it uh, a few minutes ago so do consider what you have written down so it begins like a pack of wolves the wind howled through the air tearing with a ferocity that sent shivers down my spine. Raindrops fell from the sky, dash each one a teardrop. It fell as if the heavens themselves were weeping. Roaring like an angry lion, the thunder shook the ground beneath my feet. Dancing across the sky, the lightning illuminated the darkness with its electrifying presence. So that was the first paragraph. Now, if you've noticed where the ticks are, these are examples that are essentially what is required for a level five response. So including a variety of language features. So like a pack of wolves, that's a sim simile opener. Um, I've used the dash to show uh, using a variety of punctuation. Heaven, heavens themselves were weeping. That's personification. So look at the sophistication within my description here. Dancing across the sky. Again, that is personification. Um, and look at where you went well here. So my advice, whenever you're writing your paragraphs, this is a top tip for you all. Always aim to use 
some language features and simultaneously some form of punctuation ideally to show variety okay so here i've used a dash um, you may decide if you have a space for a semicolon you'd use a semicolon etc and remember ambitious vocabulary they do mention it in the mark scheme so super important you guys are using it throughout your answer now have i used ambitious vocabulary here yes i have okay so it's something that you should aim to use within your writing so let's have let's move on to the second paragraph swaying and bowing comma the trees reached out their branches in a desperate plea for mercy look at that that's a metaphor it's exaggeration showing you that it's suffering and it's in, and it's in need of help um pelted against whoops yeah um pelted against my window pane the raindrops created a symphony of nature's raw power like a thousand tiny drum beats notice how sophisticated that is now i haven't made it simple i've been very very detailed and descriptive and i've used ambitious vocabulary to describe the sounds that could be heard in the face of such a majestic display of nature's might i couldn't help but feel a sense of insignificance chaos and beauty intertwined look at that contrast okay so again this is done intentionally destruction and awe-inspiring wonder coexisted look at how sophisticated these ideas are i'm using the weather i'm describing how the weather has impacted the land and all i'm doing is i'm i'm adding a twist to it but how am i doing this i'm just adding a variety of language features i'm also plugging some punctuation and i'm also plugging some vocabulary and if you put this all together you blend it together you'll naturally get a really good answer so that's something that you all need to do and over time with practice you all will get there um, gradually the storm began to subside the rain transformed into a gentle drizzle semicolon the thick clouds started to part revealing a glimmer of sunlight washed away by the storm worries and troubles dissipated leaving behind a sense of tranquility now again if you've noticed here i'm continuously using punctuation for effect here i've used a semicolon um, i've also if you look at the beginning i've used a adverb opener to show the examiner sentence variety and sentence variation now unfortunately this is something a, a lot of students struggle with please 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 show the examiner you know how to use a variety of sentences and not only that it's important because it makes your story interesting it allows your story to flow and it and it alleviates it from being repetitive um, moving on um, as the storm gradually subsided the clouds began to part like curtains unveiling a breathtaking scene so here um, i'm using a simile like curtains unveiling a breathtaking scene so very simple but it's as if you, when you draw the curtains okay it's creating this new uh, image the sun emerged from the veil casting its golden rays upon the world below so look so simple i've used a metaphor golden rays to show you how it was a unique moment it was a special moment just like gold it's something special it's something unique the rain soaked earth glistened like a diamond again simile reflecting the vibrant colors of the newly bloomed flowers a sense of serenity okay that's almost sibilance a sense of serenity washed over me like a warm embrace from nature itself with the storm behind us the atmosphere seemed to exhale a sigh of relief the air once heavy and charged now felt crisp and rejuvenating so again look at structure i've used structure to show that shift from what happened in the past to now what is happening in the present and then the scent of petrichor so again using my senses remember when you're writing your story writing your description continuously use your five senses that earthy aroma after rainfall filled my nostrils awakening a sense of nostalgia and tranquility birds emerged from their hiding places their melodious songs echoing through the air as if celebrating the return of calmness and harmony it was victory day for nature 
In this moment of stillness, I couldn't help but appreciate the power and resilience of nature. The storm had reminded me of the beauty that lies within both chaos and tranquility, and how they intertwine to create a harmonious balance in the world. This was undeniably a utopia. Okay, If you noticed here, I've used an exclamation mark, again reiterating the importance of using a variety of punctuation. But at the same time, I'm sustaining this sophistication, um, and I'm really painting this vivid image in the reader's mind. I'm showing the contrast, the juxtaposition uh, from the chaos of the storm to the tranquility of the sunlight. So again, remember I mentioned this, and it's also mentioned in the mark scheme to be sophisticated with your ideas. And that's something that this answer is um, illustrating. The storm had left its mark, semicolon, nature's canvas now adorned with vibrant hues and a renewed sense of life. The flowers, resilient and determined, stood tall, their petals kissed by raindrops, dash, each one a testament to their strength and beauty. It was as if the storm had washed away the old, making, away, making way for a fresh chapter, full stop, a new beginning. Again, full stop, tick. That's a short, simple sentence and a great ending to the uh, answer. Uh, to create impact. So again, that is the full response and that is the end. And again, the reason I show you this is to reiterate the importance of using a variety of punctuation, using a variety of um, language devices and a variety of structural devices as well um, to create impact or to create effect. Now, this definitely would be on the higher ends of the mark scheme at level five because it meets this criteria. Now, there are always things for you to improve. So, for example, if you look at this response, in terms of structure, what could have uh, what you could have done is, in fact, included a one sentence paragraph. Why? Because you could use that to shift the focus. But this is why when you write the answer, you should give yourself at least five minutes to the end, uh, towards the end for you to check over your work, for anything for you to edit or take out or change, etc. But ideally, your plan should be, um, you know, covering what you are discussing in each paragraph. So that's why um, I always tell students um, and I always tell my subscribers the importance of planning. Please plan this question. Um, although you don't get marks for your plan, if you create a good plan, you will go on to answer uh, and write an amazing answer, which will impress the examiner. Now, I hope this has given you all a better understanding of how to approach the questions. And again, feel free, some of these phrases, if you feel like you want to use them in your own answers, I'm more than happy for you to use them, so long as that you are able to understand what it means. So my advice to you is practice this question and the more practice you do the better you'll become and the more better you become the more confident you are okay it's as simple as that and i know it sounds very uh, it sounds cliche but honestly you need to make sure you practice your creative writing i cannot stress this enough and it is worth 50 percent of your gcse english language exam so please make sure you practice this. Uh, we have many other videos on our YouTube channel. So do go through our playlist and go over the language paper two and language paper one videos. Uh, for online tuition, we are covering GCSE English language paper one and paper two. Uh, lessons are taught by UK qualified teachers with years and years of experience. And if you are interested in joining, our spaces are very limited and we are only taking on a few more students for the upcoming, uh, for this current academic year. So if you are interested, do contact us via our website, www.easyeducationlondon.com and you can book your classes there. Alternatively, you can email us on easyeducationlondon at gmail.com for uh, your inquiry for your interest and we can get you started other than that thank you for watching i appreciate the uh the constant support and feedback from you all um i hope all of you preparing for your mock exams it goes really well and remember stay calm stay focused and practice under time management other than that thank you for watching please subscribe like and share for more don't forget to follow us on social media as well thank you